Go over to Buckingham Palace, where ABC's Lama Hassan is standing by live. Hey, Diane, well, it really felt like we were all taking part in history today. We were watching the crowd swell all day today. And as soon as the big iron gates behind me opened, the crowd rushed to catch a glimpse of the easel that was carrying the formal announcement. Then there was a loud eruption of cheers. Some were belting out, God save the queen. Others were singing happy birthday, all to welcome the royal baby. What's also welcome in this country is that this baby will be a big boost to the economy. Baby Cambridge is big business here. There will be an avalanche of royal baby souvenirs. Up to 14 million are expected to be sold. A lot of the official memorabilia was on hold until the royal birth, so now the floodgates have opened. Let the official royal baby gifts roll. Almost $400 million will be spent not only on souvenirs, but festivities as well, with estimates of 300 million bottles of champagne and sparkling wine will be bought for the celebrations here. Well, we've got some of the front pages of the newspapers just to give you a flavor of how this nation is celebrating. The Daily Mail writes, oh boy, one's a grandpa, of course, referring to Prince Charles. The other one, The Sun, the British tabloid newspaper, has changed its name from S-U-N to S-O-N, just to mark the royal birth. Diane. Okay, Lama, thanks so much for all your reporting on the story. And a note tonight about the remaining British Empire. And here it is. We thought you might want to see it again. In addition to the United United Kingdom, there are 15 commonwealths dotting the globe. And tonight in one New Zealand, a tower awash in blue, and back in London, the fountains at Trafalgar Square, the London eye lit up with the colors of the British flag, and storks were welcoming the baby boy.